Welcome to the Shulamite Podcast, an extension of Shulamite Ministries and Shulamite.com, with weekly interviews and teaching with author and speaker Martha Kilpatrick and hosted by John Enslow. This weekly podcast is a way to stay connected to the ministry. So come experience anointed messages, not giving just another method, but a living impartation. There are so many wounded adults who don't recognize the source of their woundedness that is what she was saying, a childhood rejection, a childhood abuse that was never dealt with, never healed, never restored, and that the child grows up and grows old with that injury dominating their psyche without being aware of it. And this is one of the offers, offers of healing, normalcy, restoration that come through the gospel. And that the Holy Spirit is able to heal. And I'm, I'm convinced that the great bulk of us suffer from injuries of that sort. We had them when we were in grade school. Could have been a teacher, could have been a, a parent or another student that injuries that we've never, never, we're not, we're no longer conscious of them, but the effect is still there. Um. That the little child may have believed because of what someone said, believed about themselves, or an experience with fear that I'm no good, I'll never be any good. True. Well, I try, you know, and it, or if I don't, um, choose, let myself feel love, then I'll never be hurt again. Mm. There's a lot of people who've cut walls off their heart, kind of <laughs> cut it, or severed it from their brain. Uh, we were talking about this the other day, living out of their brain because the heart had to protect itself at all costs from, from injury. So the heart has been walled off. And God wants to let us know that it's safe. It's safe. There's no more danger. It's okay Amen. to come out. Do you want to tell about that experience about that woman that you prayed for who'd been in satanic ritual abuse and the vision you had for the her? The one? The woman who had been in satanic ritual abuse and the vision you had of her in the, the sofa? <coughs> Help me remember it. Um, you know, the, the doctor lady, the psychology professor had these students, had these uh, patients. All right, that she I had. asked you to minister to them, remember? The first yeah, one she brought right. to you. That oh, is similar to what she is touching on there. When I was a pastor, and we, had, we were the only church in town that did deliverance ministry, and that was the big, actually, the big attraction. Well, a local psychotherapist knew that. And I don't know that she understood all the ramifications of deliverance in comparison to what she did. But she called me and asked me, she said, may I send you eight or ten of my worst patients? And I said, yes, of course. And then when I hung up the phone, I thought, you idiot, you know, you've had no experience dealing with psychiatric patients and, and psychological patients. But at any rate, I'd already said I would, and she sent them. And the first one who came was an eye-opener to me for the rest of my life. I benefited as much as the patient because... And I always worked with a team of others, in, but deliverance was really more what I did. And this first patient came, and bang, I had a vision. I saw her about probably four years old, and a little, still a little girl, hiding behind an old-fashioned wicker sofa. And there were no cushions on the sofa. I could actually see through the wicker and see where she had climbed up in the underpinning 
a substructure of that sofa. She had she was one touching the floor. She was climbed in it. She had her arms and legs in the sofa. And I knew immediately when and that was a vision. I knew immediately that I could never pull her out. If I were to try to pull her out, it would injure her. And so what I had to do was to coax her to volunteer to come out. And that's what I did. And now the woman 30 years old is sitting there, but the Holy Spirit showed me this is where part of her still is. Your task is to coax that three or four year old little girl mentally to come out of hiding. And I began to do that, and it worked. The appeal was very um, something she could trust, trustworthy. And what was actually happening was not the little girl herself actually in the sofa, but a part of her mind that was broken off and still hiding in that historic environment. At any rate, the psychotherapist called me back after I administered with this particular woman. She said, I've had that patient, I think she said for two months, and had no results. Said, you've had her for two weeks and she's normal. She said, I want to do what you're doing. Will you teach me? And I told her, I said, yes, I'll teach you what I can. Um, and so she came and I began actually teaching her what I knew about deliverance ministry. And, but in this case, it was actually delivering that part of that 30-year-old woman who was still as a four-year-old little girl hiding mentally, still there hiding behind the sofa. I couldn't force her out, but I could coax her out. And at any rate, it worked. Psychotherapist called me back and said, I had that patient for, I, I think she said two months, two years, all right, and said, um, and got no results, and said, you've had her for two weeks, and she's normal. Um, at any rate, it was an eye-opener to me, because this was not deliverance. This was not casting out a demon. This was speaking to a part of a person's mind that unconsciously known to her, or un unconscious to her, part of her was still there. And when she came out and joined present life and accepted present reality as reality, she was normalized. And that's what the psychotherapist had discovered. At any rate, it was a time of intense learning for me and a principle that I employed then with other uh, similar cases because we're not dealing just with the need for deliverance ministry or casting out a demon. That is very real. Far more real than most preachers would ever guess that, and psychotherapists would ever guess that they are dealing in many cases with invasive spirits that have taken advantage of woundedness as their door, their opening to get into the person's psyche and mind. Um, and I remember one time a psychotherapist sitting in my office saying, I have often wished that I could just reach inside my patient and pull out the problem. 
I said, you can. It was a man, educated, well-groomed man, the uh, psychotherapist. I said, you can. I don't even, but with my effort, I don't think, and he was Christian, I don't think he ever saw the reality and the opportunity that he had, because many don't. Unfortunately, many don't. We hope you've enjoyed the Shulamite podcast. For all the latest from Shulamite Ministries, please visit us at shulamite.com, where you'll find Martha's daily devotions, posts from getalongwithgod.com, and the online library of all of Martha's writings. At shulamite.com, downloading the free Shulamite app is easy, and livingchristianbooks.com is only a click away. Thank you for joining us on this journey to discover a God worth knowing.